What's up, Dallas Mavericks fans? Harrison Graham here with the episode of Mavericks Today. The NBA draft is in the books, but the Mavs were active after the draft last night by adding a couple of undrafted free agents. So we'll take a look at those players here in just a moment. But I think it's a good time to just kind of rehash what happened last night because it was a very busy night for the Mavericks. We thought there could be a trade that goes down, but did not see two happening as Dallas traded down from 10 to 12 to land Derek Lively with the Thunder. Uh, they moved up to 10 and drafted a player, Cason Wallace. Uh, and in that trade, mo more importantly almost even, is Dallas was able to shed Davis Bertans, who's now with the Thunder, and uh, create a trade player exception, which they later used for Rashawn Holmes. Talk about him in a sec. But they also created a full mid-level exception spot instead of just having the taxpayers, which is going to give the Mavericks more options in free agency. So that happened with the first move. Second move, they traded back into the draft with the Sacramento Kings, 24th selection. Got Olivier Maxson's Prosper, a really physical wing defender who I think has some offensive upside, although that side of it's going to take a little bit of time. But you get two good defenders in Lively and Olivier Maxson's Prosper. And in that move, uh, you take on Rashawn Holmes with your trade player exception that you got uh, in the first move, and I think Holmes, whether he starts or comes off the bench, can be a quality role man and finisher around the basket. I'm excited with what the Mavericks did last night. I feel very, very good. Now, which new Maverick are you most excited about? If it's Derek Lively, type L. If it's uh, Olivier Maxence Prosper, a.k.a. Omax, type P. If it's Rashawn Holmes, type H, let us know in the comments below which Maverick that you are more excited about. Now let's get to those UDFA signings here, and let's start with a player that I'm very familiar with, Mike Miles Jr. Uh, out of TCU, three-year college player who uh, has agreed to a two-way contract, which means he can play up to 50 games in the NBA, but he can also play in the G League. Obviously, you know, two-way contracts get shuffled a lot, so no guarantee he'll make the team, but... Who knows, maybe he makes the real roster too. Time will tell how that plays out. Obviously, he'll get to play in the Summer League for the Mavs coming up here in a couple of weeks. But uh, really good splits last year, 18 points per game, 50% from the field, really efficient player, 36 from three. Uh, the three-point shot is kind of a streaky shot for him. Um, it kind of comes and goes. So that's kind of why you see that 36% number, which is still pretty good because he took about four threes per game. Uh, but he's an explosive guard for his size. He's only about 6'2", 190, 195, but I think he was top five at the NBA Combine and vertical jump. Uh, you can see that on display when you watch him play. A couple of poster dunks he threw down in college. Really good handle now. He's definitely a guard that's looking to score. He's almost like an undersized two. Uh, so if you can add, you know, kind of some point guard uh, skills to his game. He's a good passer, but he's not really a distributor, if that makes sense, uh, for Mike Miles. But he's a flamethrower. He can be a guy uh, that can really fill it up. The question is, can he be a little bit more consistent with this game and be a good bench volume scorer in this league? I do think it's possible. He competes on defense. His size, obviously, at times will give him problems there, but he does uh, compete on that end. So I'm excited about this one. I think you look at uh, the two-way guys here. I think Mike Miles does have the most upside because he is easily the most skilled offensive player uh, out of these three in McKinley Wright and A.J. Lawson. I think this will be a fun player to watch in the Summer League coming up soon. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he was disappointed he didn't get drafted, but uh, it's going to be exciting. Now, a lot of you guys are probably asking, wait, three two-way contracts? Yes, the new CBA allows for you to have three guys on two-way contracts, which that gives more guys opportunities that either didn't get drafted or are trying to stick around in the league. You can have that extra slot for a two-way contract. So, uh, that's good news for everyone involved. Uh, good news for Mike Miles, uh, who, again, probably wanted to get drafted. But to get a two-way deal, uh, that gives him a little bit more security and at least uh, a better chance to stick around with the Dallas Mavericks. I'm excited for him. And I really do believe that he can be a good player in this league. I do just wonder, with the Mavericks already having a Jaden Hardy, their skill sets are kind of similar. So for him to you know potentially crack a rotation – that probably is unlikely in year one, but down the road, you just never know. Grade the pickup of Mike Miles, ABC DRF. I think it's an undrafted free agent. It's, you know, a B at worst, if not an A, because you're not committing a lot to him. And B, I think he, in my eyes, he could have been a draftable player in the middle or uh, latter part of the second round. 
when you're a guy who can score 20 points per game in college at an efficient clip, I mean, you at least have a chance to make it in the NBA. Mavericks fans, things are heating up. I mean, last night, I think, was really the jump start to this offseason. So if you don't want to miss anything surrounding this basketball team, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. It's YouTube.com slash Mavs TV. We will continue to hit you guys with the latest Dallas Mavericks news, rumors, free agency, trade buzz, and everything else surrounding this team for agency one week from today. So I'm excited to discuss that. The second undrafted free agent signing is Jelly Walker. Jordan Walker goes by Jelly out of UAB. Kind of similar to Miles in the sense of just kind of a high-octane score, right? Now, not as efficient from the field, but a slightly better three-point shooter and Definitely more volume overall, right? 23.2 points per game. I mean, he was arguably the best player uh, in Conference USA this past year. Helped lead UAB to a couple of good seasons there. And uh, that's, uh, that, that's exciting to get a guy like this who's been used to carrying a team. And now with a lesser role, he'll have an opportunity to maybe stick around. Maybe he earns a two-way and kicks someone off a two-way. You never know. Uh, you look at his kind of resume accolades. In Conference USA, he was the Conference USA Newcomer of the Year in 2022, Player of the Year in 2022, and First Team All-Conference the past couple of seasons as well. So he really lit it up uh, for the Blazers in college. And look, in the near future, I think this Mavericks Summer League team could be fun, especially if Jaden Hardy does play. I mean, Hardy, Walker, and Miles are all capable of dropping 20 or 30 in a Summer League game. Uh, I can promise you that. So that could be exciting. I mean, you look at a potential summer league starting five, uh, Jaden Hardy, Mike Miles, uh, Jelly Walker, Ol Olivier Maxitz Prosper, and Derek Lively. I mean, that's, uh, you know, three to four potential NBA rotation players right there. So that could be a good time. We'll see if Hardy plays in year two. I'd like to see him play at least a little bit, probably not throughout the summer league. I think he showed enough the second half of last year. You don't want to overutilize him in the summer league but I think he could use some run and then obviously both Rooks and the undrafted guys they should uh, obviously play a lot up in Las Vegas so we'll see what happens there summer league starts on July 7th and runs through the 17th now name another undrafted free agent the Mavericks should sign I'd like to see Kendrick Davis who played uh, start actually started his college career at TCU but then played at SMU for three years then he transferred to Memphis he kind of moved around a lot but an undersized guard who's uh, a fun player. He could be interesting uh, to get in there. Maybe there's a 3 and D type of wing out there that remains unsigned as well. So if you could add some more length, that would be fun also. But if there's a name out there that didn't get drafted that you would like to see the Mavericks sign, go ahead and let me know who that player is. All right, Mavericks fans, appreciate everybody who's cover uh, st stuck around for our covers the past couple of days really enjoyed our live draft coverage last night thanks to everybody who tuned in for that more to come we'll have a video tomorrow here on the channel as well type mffl in the comments we'll see you soon